All right, I'm going to get things started, folks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first Westmoreland County uh, meeting for the 2023 Long Range Plan Update. Thank you all for being here. My name is Dom DeAndrea, and I'm SPC's Transportation Planning Director. I'd like to acknowledge County Commissioners Cerulli Thrasher, Chu, and Curtis, and County staff, and thank them for their continuing support in the development of the Long Range Plan and the Transportation Improvement Plan. We're here today to talk about future investments in our region, and specifically Westmoreland County, and provide an update on where we are in the Long Range Plan development process, and gather some feedback from you. Uh, we update the 25-year Long Range Plan every four years. The current Transportation Improvement Plan, or the TIP, which represents the first four years of the Long Range Plan, invests nearly $214 million worth of highway and transit projects into Westmoreland County. Second slide, please. So a couple of housekeeping items. Um, please continue to mute your microphone and have your camera off. Uh, questions uh, should be entered into the chat box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, questions will be addressed at the conclusion of the presentation, and the presentation will be posted on SPC's website. Next slide, please. So the, this presentation will cover many of the key aspects of the long-range plan development, such as schedule, public involvement, the review of the plan's policies and strategies. Then we will cover the transportation planning and, and long-range plan project list development, including a look at current TIP funding and projects advancing from the, from the long-range plan to the TIP, uh, some of the listed current long-range plan projects, and some projects under consideration for listing in the, in the long-range plan uh, update. Then we'll shift gears a little to discuss the new bipartisan infrastructure law, some of the discretionary programs that came out of it, and SBC's approach to those opportunities. Uh, we'll have a quick update on broadband strategy and wrap it up with uh, SPC economic development efforts. Next slide, please. So um, our long range plan establishes the vision, goals and strategies for the region and also lays out actions and potential implementation partners to advance the goals and strategies to ultimately achieve this vision. The regional vision is that of a world-class, safe, well-maintained, and connected multimodal transportation system that provides mobility for all, empowers resilient and sustainable communities, and supports a globally competitive economy. So to achieve this vision, the Long Range Plan includes a list of projects currently within fiscal capacity and projects beyond fiscal capacity, meaning based on funding projections, we can't afford some of the projects that are proposed. That is one of the reasons that we want your feedback. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Rhonda Craig, who's going to go over a polling exercise with, with you. Rhonda? Thank you, Don. Yep, so we have a couple polling questions for you. I'm gonna open it now and it's um, what we're asking you to do is um, tell us what you feel is most urgent. Um, the first question is pertaining to the goals. Um, for the region to address in the long range plan. Bear with me. Okay. Can everybody see the question? Yes. Okay, thank you. About 30 seconds left on the timer. About 10 seconds left. There seems to be about seven people that didn't respond. Four, three, two, one. 
So I'm just going to show the results. Can everybody see the results? Yes. Okay, and I'm just going to give me one second. I'm going to show the second one. Sorry, bear with me. Okay, the second one is coming. I opened the poll up. This one is three minutes. Can everybody see it? And what we're asking it again, if um, you could tell us your most urgent strategies uh, for the region to address in our long range plan. Again, these are strategies. Rhonda, do you know if it allows you to choose more than one? Yeah, you can choose more than one. Right. Thanks, Dominic. Sorry about that. That's okay. like a minute left. And there's like 32 seconds left. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. I'm going to show the results. Can everybody see the results? Yep, we can see him. Okay. Thank you everyone for uh, taking the time to do that exercise. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, <clears throat> so SPC has various ways we engage our region. Um, we have numerous committees. Um, you can always um, email us for comments at, or with your comments and questions with uh, at comments at spcregion.org. Or you can also email me at rcraig at spcregion.org. Um, we have in-person and also virtual public meetings, which we're having right now. You can always check out the tip and the long-range plan at the spcregion.org. You can also follow us on social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, also, your comments and feedback is valued and encouraged, and all questions and comments are processed here at the SPC. 
Um, this is this round one of our public meetings, and I'll be reaching out probably next April to get a, um, uh, a date set up for your formal public uh, meeting in May of 2023. Hello, this is Ryan Gordon. Oh, Ryan, I'm sorry. Yeah, hello, this is Ryan Gordon. I'm a manager of transportation program development at SPC. And I'm gonna run through a few slides here. They're gonna talk about uh, the process of the long range plan development and uh, the, some of the project specifics of Westmoreland and then um, <clears throat> where we're going from here. So the transportation planning process goes through various steps in a cycle that produces the transportation improvement program or tip every two years and it also uh, creates a new long-range transportation plan or lrtp every four years um, the federal regulations require spc to develop and update the lrtp every four years so spc is currently working to produce the long range transportation plan and we'll have a document, um, a draft document put together for public review in May and adoption of that is anticipated on June 26, 2023. Next slide, please. So this is a diagram depicting the general process of the development of the long range transportation plan and the and the project list that goes with it. So public involvement, you can see really does bookend this process of updating the LRTP. Uh, we're currently working through that top row of tasks, including um, going out to brief each county in a meeting such as the one we're having uh, tonight as our initial public involvement. We also have our formal comment period uh, there at the bottom row and middle box. We also have our final comment period, like I said, in May. And right now, um, we're really working on that top row of, of activities. Um, and we work mostly through our three LRTP development work groups um, to review current conditions and status and performance measures to develop long range uh, transportation needs and develop long range transportation candidate projects. Um, and you'll see um, SPC will be uh, conducting the screening. And we're really screening for consistency criteria um, to review the candidate projects. And that's really with our planning factors and our strategies that we just looked at and the overall um, performance measures that, that we're uh, operating under. So SBC will continue to conduct that screening and we'll be providing input to our work group uh, on the highway bridge side of things. Um, and then we also develop a long range transportation plan uh, investment plan. Um, and this investment plan identifies a conservative um, approach to um, what the future transportation revenues um, that are out there. And it creates an investment plan in collaboration with our work group members <clears throat> that really shows what our reasonably available funding will be um, for the years of, of, the, of the long range plan. And it's really, um, then that we get into looking at um, the work group meetings to really look at carryover projects. Those are projects that are already on the plan that need to stay on there and continue forward. And then also um, candidate projects, um, what, what projects we may be able to, to add as new projects to the long range plan. And there will be between nine and 12 of these work group meetings throughout the region um, in this, County, it's it's uh, with District 12 and the county folks from from the four counties in District 12, and we'll come to a consensus on the long range or LRTP in the project list. Once we do that, we'll be down at the bottom row there, 
and we'll be conducting our air quality conformity and our environmental justice analysis. These are required analysis that is is you know that we have to do as part of our update process. And then, as a few of us mentioned, when we'll be conducting our um, comment period, and that's like in a spring May time frame, and then we'll go to adoption. Um, next slide, please. So. One thing we wanted oh, back up one. Yeah, so the long range plan is really a long term view of the transportation investments in the SPC region and we're in for this plan. We're looking out to 2050. So, within this time frame, um, you know, we develop a conservative estimates of the revenues that's reasonably expected to be available and. That means we put on projects. And we cannot exceed the amount that's reasonably expected for our revenues. And that's what's referred to as fiscal constraint. So um, the LRTP project list is under fiscal constraint for the projects that we put in the fiscal constraint portion of the plan. Um, so the projects um, really fall into a time frame of three different stages. Um, and funds are assigned to each stage. And so in stage one, this is also known as the, 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 the TIP or TIP. Um, these are the years that we're under right now, 2023 to 2026. That's considered to be stage one. In this time frame, we have a very detailed program with all the projects listed by project phases, by year, um, by fund type and amounts by different fund, uh, you know, fund types and classes. Um, in stage two of the long range plan, which is 2027 to 2034, um, this is the next eight years after the current tip. <clears throat> and in this stage, <coughs> we include the total amounts that are remaining on projects on the tip beyond the tip and then total cost of projects that are set to start in these years. So this stage does not include minor projects. It includes um, some, what we call investment category line items, which is just an amount of money that says, we're gonna spend, we think this much on bridges on this network um, or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> In the third stage of the long range plan, these are the most far out um, uh, investments that they are really just reserved for uh, large investments. The projects are identified and they're identified in conceptual terms in terms of what the project description is and the amount of funding. Uh, those are conceptual. Um, and what we do is, we have a lot of those line item investments out that far where we have bigger amounts of money that we reserve for certain types of bridge work or certain roadway or safety projects. So out in the third stage, really the cost estimates and the descriptions and project scopes, like I said, are much more conceptual. Keep in mind that this time frame represents 13 tip updates and we update the long range plan every time we update the tip. So th what I'm trying to say is this is an ever evolving, always con constantly happening where we're updating the program, we're making adjustments and in this four years um, uh, of, the, of, the, of the current tip, we update that monthly. When we get into the long range plan, we kind of do that yearly, and then we do this larger update every four years that we're under now. Um, and I think the only other thing to say is really when we're talking about candidate projects, um, most of the candidate projects will be added in that third stage, that further out stage, because we already have projects listed in stage two. A lot of that is, um, really taking up our available funding in stage two. So next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is just some background on the, our TIP funding, just to give you an idea where we stand in terms of the trends. And there was a downward trajectory in the region's TIP base funds going back to about 2015. With the passage of the bipartisan 
Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, we've received additional federal funds that have taken us up to around about the levels of the 2019 tip. <clears throat> That's on the highway bridge side. Next slide, please. This um, is just a graph to show you the current tip investments in the region on the highway bridge tip. And the main story is that bridges continue to be our largest investment in the region. And uh, with the influx of additional federal funds specifically for bridges, we do not see that changing anytime soon. In fact, we're gonna have a, a large investment in bridges in the long range transportation plan. Next slide, please. So, like I said, the passage of the IIJA or bill um, has provided additional federal funding to the region. A few of the highlights are really, like I said, that new federal bridge uh, program that's, um, you know, it's provided over $211 million of federal funds for bridges in the region. Other increases that we saw with IIJA include increases in our, what's called our off system bridge funding and also our transportation alternatives funding. At the same time, we have experienced a little bit of a uh, downward tick in our state funds on, on the tip, and that's largely due to um, you know, effects of COVID's impact on transportation and travel. And um, so we expect you know, we may be coming out of that now. So next slide, please. So talking about Candidate projects for the long range transportation plan. These candidate projects come from a variety of sources that you can see listed here. They come from counties or cities and municipalities. They come from uh, largely PennDOT district and also from public input. Those are all sources of candidate projects for the LRTP. And all the candidate projects are reviewed by SPC for consistency with the long range plan strategies along with federal and state transportation planning factors, as well as our federal performance measures. Um, like I said, SPC will screen those candidate projects and we will be sh and we share the results with our LRTP development work groups and development of the fiscally constrained long range plan. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, Focus areas for the LRTP. So here are some of them. Um, we are still um, a, a region that focuses on asset management and safety. Um, those are really our key focus areas for the region. Um, with additional federal funds, as I mentioned, the bridges um, with IIJA, we really expect a significant number of bridges to be listed on our fiscally constrained LRTP project list. Um, we also have um, focus on <clears throat> the transit side of the long range plan. And that includes focuses on operations and, and new facilities. We also are looking um, at the Pittsburgh Regional Transit's long range plan, next transit plan as as a focus of, of the, some of the transit side of things. We also continue to invest and look at projects on efficiency and operations, bike ped and, and other multimodal areas. <clears throat> and we also have a um, emphasis on helping out uh, on the local bridge side as well. And landslides, particularly in District 12, um, continue to be a focus area for investment um, since we have some of the most landslide prone areas in the state <clears throat> in District 12. Next slide, please. So, like the next two slides are really just um, focusing in on Westmoreland County. And I just wanted to list a few things up there that, that are projects that have started out on the long range plan, but have moved to the tip. And some of our bigger projects. Um, have moved into, um, like I said, the tip, the detailed stages. Um, and, and some of these projects um, are going to be fully funded on the tip. 
some of them may have some little amounts that that trickle onto the long range plan. But for the most part, these are major projects that have moved from our long range plan into the the key implementation years of the tip for construction. Hey, Ryan, this is Angela from Pendant. I just wanted to add for everybody on the call. Um, the US 30 over Loyal Hannah Creek, that is a bridge preservation project. And the US 30 at Georgia Station Road, that project is right now a study. As everybody knows, that intersection is very congested right now, and there are businesses on all four corners. So we are going to be starting a study phase there, I believe, in 2024, which the 23 tip, 20, we're actually in federal fiscal year 23 now, the first year of the tip. And the study phase is programmed in federal fiscal year 24. So the study phase will begin next year. And then the Salina Bridge and West Newton Bridge, we've been out to public comment for those two large bridge projects. And the 3A56 over Pine Run, that project is actually going out to bid early in 2023. And everybody knows the Laurel Valley projects are moving right along. We were fortunate enough to get spike funding from the Secretary's Discretionary Fund, which was additional to the region for those. And the Donahoe Road Georgia Station intersection project, that's going to be a roundabout. I don't have the let date off the top of my head right now, but I believe it is probably in 2024. Yeah, thanks, Angela. Yeah, I should mention that that, that second bullet is study. Uh, that's the phase that's moved them to the tip. The actual project, we have a placeholder for it out in stage three in 2035 to 2050 sometime um, once the study's completed. <clears throat> um, any other comments on that, Angela? Nope, I don't think so. I just wanted to run through those. I know we're here for the long range plan, but I like to talk about some of our current projects as well while we're here because I know you said 14, the long range plan is the long range plan is 14 tip updates, which is a really long time. So I like to get in some of the really fun projects that we're doing now too while we're here. Yeah, and you know, we're all, the, the tip is the, really the first phase. So it's no problem there. Okay, next slide, please. This slide. There we go. Okay, this slide is really just we have a bunch of candidate projects under consideration, and this is just six of them, um, just a sampling. Um, and like I said, we will be <clears throat> discussing all these in detail uh, over the course of the next two or three meetings with the LRTP work group. And when we come back in the um, spring and May, we will have our, our list will be finalized. But that's just an example across of, of some of the types of things that we're looking at. Always, um, you know, bridges, always roadway preservations and roadway reconstructions, and always uh, safety. So just a couple of sample projects there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this is an equivalent slide, but on the on the transit side, um, these are the transit operators in Westmoreland County, Westmoreland Transit, and in Midmont Valley is portion also in Westmoreland. And this is just a, a kind of a snapshot summary of some of the investments that are on the current long range transportation plan and the types of things that will be on the LRTP on the transit side. <clears throat> now, you can see that there's some projects under consideration um, for both of these operating areas, including the idea of these multimodal hubs that would be kind of servicing transit, but spread out throughout the county and in certain locations. And there are some, I think, potential hubs identified um, along with some potential future corridor improvements on some of the uh, routes within Westmoreland County. <clears throat> the key point here is that, like the highway bridge side, the, the transit planners at SPC will be working closely with the transit operators, including those in Westmoreland County, 
as they review the current LRTP and, and carry over projects, and then also identifying and discussing some new projects uh, for listing uh, in, in stage two and three pertaining to transit. <clears throat> so I'll just pause there and see if, if, if Tom or Dave on the transit side had any, any interjections. I just wanted to note that some of the projects listed here are projects that the investment has already been made in those projects. The facility upgrades for Westmoreland Transit um, uh, that are listed here um, are have already been uh, that investment has already been made. Um, the, and the North Huntington Park and Ride facility is a, a project that's already been uh, uh, most almost well, mostly completed. Um, the, the, in terms of capital investments, um, always, 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 uh, for, uh, transit, um, operators, uh, the investment in equipment is the, is the, always their biggest invest investment. And, uh, we get some of these numbers off of a tool that is used by the transit operators in the state, um, called the capital planning tool. It's, uh, run by, uh, PennDOT. And so some of the, um, uh, some of the numbers that we get out off of that capital planning tool are based on the replacement schedules for uh, their buses and for their equipment. And uh, they're in various uh, stage, they'll, they'll appear in various stages of the long range plan uh, as those buses reach their useful life and become necessary. But it should be noted that right now in transit <clears throat> in general across the whole country, um, there's a lot of navel gazing going on. There's a lot of um, uh, uh, everybody, every every system that I'm aware of is taking a close look at what they do, how they do it and why they do it. And uh, most of the transit operators in our region, of course, uh, Port Authority engaged during the period of um, uh, COVID engaged in a uh, 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 fairly extraordinary long range planning effort. Um, extraordinary in the sense that it, uh, elicited a tremendous amount of public input at a time when uh, that wasn't real easy to do. Uh, but it was an extraordinary effort and there are a lot of, uh, they got a lot out of it. But um, a lot of the input for that and a lot of what the other transit operators in our region are looking at is uh, trying to figure out what the public needs and trying to figure out how to meet those needs. So you will see in uh, Westmoreland County, uh, we we had a, a one on one with the uh, folks, the staff from uh, Westmoreland County Transit yesterday, as a matter of fact, and uh, you'll see very shortly them being engaged in uh, service planning and, and uh, uh, transit planning that takes a, a close look at the system and what the system is doing and how many buses it takes to do those uh, things and whether those are the right kinds of balances to go forward. Um, similar things will happen in the Valley uh, as time goes on. Um, and I, I guess the, the point to be made here, and it was made in an earlier slide. Um, when you look at the uh, bridge and highway investments, it's pretty easy to, to get a picture in your head of what's gonna happen with that money. Something is going to get built. There will be something built or something uh, paved or something. There will be something physical happen. When you look at the investments in transit, you always have to think of it in terms of the service that's provided. And so that operations uh, note that was in, an, in the earlier slide is probably the most important thing for people to take from uh, the long range plan that um, uh, what we invest in as a region uh, is, is service and service on the street and people getting rides. And so I think it's real important to understand the differences there between uh, the types of projects uh, and the types of investments on uh, the transit side as opposed to the highway and bridge side. And obviously, if anyone has any questions about any specific investments for either of these transit operators, um, we can answer those questions for you. And I really do want to make a, I'm going to make a, an extra point there at the at the PRT plan, the Pittsburgh Regional Transit Next Transit Plan, several of the projects that are listed on their their uh, on their their plan are pointed in the in the kind of general direction, heading right towards uh, Westmoreland County. Uh, several projects in the Mon Valley, the uh, Allegheny Valley. Uh, they're going to have take a look at both of, at both of those uh, from a service point of view. 
and uh, we just we just put a, a project on the tip uh, two weeks ago the for for investing in in uh, 837 uh, in Allegheny County but going towards towards McKeesport that opens up some some mobility options for, uh, uh, as well when that project gets gets built for PRT uh, so keep keep an eye on what they're doing there'll be chances uh, in the uh, over this long long range plan horizon for Westmoreland County and Allegheny County to coordinate uh, and and get better mobility for everybody. Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Tom, um, for those good additions there. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So I think uh, you know we'd be remiss if we didn't mention a little bit about the continued focus on interstate in the region. Uh, and here is a list of the interstate projects uh, in PennDOT District 12 that are on the PennDOT statewide interstate 12 year program. And we'll have a list of these in the appendices of our uh, long range plan document. We will also have a list of unfunded interstate needs as well. Um, the funding that we put in our investment plan does not really include the funding that's utilized at the statewide level for interstate projects. So we like to get a list of needs in there and that helps our PennDOT districts as they uh, develop the uh, trans or develop the interstate tip, the next interstate tip. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so there's just a, a few of the other elements that are involved in the LRTP update. Um, we do our data, our data folks uh, will be putting out new um, population and employment forecasts. We'll also be doing an entire chapter um, on transportation performance management, which is Kind of a status of where we stand in regards to our different performance measures that we have uh, in the areas of safety, asset management, highway and bridge. Uh, we also have some on the transit side as well with um, safety and asset management on transit. So we'll have a whole chapter that talks about kind of how are we doing in, in terms of those uh, measures. We'll also do a air quality conformity document. We'll also do an environmental justice analysis and document. We also do an environmental inventory and analysis. And we also conduct a lot of um, agency consultations with environmental agencies or nearby agencies as well. <clears throat> uh, I think the next slide is going to be Rhonda as she talks about submitting feedback at this point. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, you have those opportunities to send um, your comments and questions to comments um, at spcregion.org. Um, in person, there's also uh, forms in, um, that you can uh, fax back or email back usually when we're in person. But again, um, comments at spcregion.org or you can always um, uh, email me at rcraig at spcregion.org. And I'm handing it back to Dominic or Brian. Yep. We, um, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, the discretionary programs that came out of it, and some of the activity that we're doing, uh, and give you a little bit about uh, broadband. Next slide. So, uh, as I mentioned before, about, about a, uh, a year ago, Congress passed and the president signed into law a $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure law. As with previous infrastructure bills, the legislation included a comprehensive and long-term surface transportation reauthorization. However, this time around, the transportation legislation also addressed other infrastructure needs and included a appropriating numerous energy related programs, including grants to modernize our electric grid, establishing pilot programs for new forms of energy like hydrogen and the capturing of carbon. 
Uh, over, of the over 400 programs within the legislation, over half of them are relevant to SPC and our region. Another significant change was the sharp increase in the, the number uh, of competitive discretionary funding programs. So in response to those opportunities, uh, these new opportunities, our commissioners have asked SPC staff to play a leading role in applying for them to ensure our region is receiving its fair share of funding. As the new programs are announced, we comb through the guidance and requirements to determine if regional applications are worth considering or if there are additional partners we can support and help in their own applications. Um, finally, uh, we know, we've noticed that every uh, funding opportunity notice from this administration has some common themes, equity, resiliency, and workforce development and demands. So we are concentrating our, on hitting those themes in our applications. Next slide. So just a, a couple of uh, things we've been working on in the last few months in terms of dis discretionary grant applications. Uh, we applied to the Multimodal Project Discretionary Grant Program for the Eastern Pittsburgh Multimodal Corridor Project that consists of improvements to the Parkway East and the East Busway, a lot of its state of good repair on the East Busway, and technological improvements on the Parkway East. This was a uh, $128 million joint request from SPC, PennDOT, and uh, Pittsburgh Regional Transit uh, uh, for, for this application. Um, we also applied to the Bridge Investment Program, the BIP, with a $73 million application. <clears throat> um, that entailed, uh, that application entailed replacement or rehabilitation of eight locally owned bridges in our region. One of those bridges is in Westmoreland County, Irwin Borough, the Fairwood Manor Bridge over Tinker's Run, uh, right adjacent to Route 30. The bridge replacement cost for that was a little over a million. Uh, bridge is 57 years old and in poor condition. So overall, eight locally owned bridges in one application. We expect to hear about that uh, before the end of the year, hopefully, if not, maybe a little sooner. Um, and, we'll, and we will be looking for local bridge candidates for next year's round as well. So these, these, some of these programs uh, are out year after year for five to six years. Um, we also applied, uh, uh, next slide, please. We also applied for the Safe Streets and Roads for All program, a $41 million request. Uh, our application was called Safer Main Streets for Southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, uh, it, it entailed implementing, planning, and construction, 29 projects on corridors and main streets with a demonstrated need for safety improvements and, and the municipal planning guide for safer main streets. SPC staff reached out to member counties and transit providers to solicit project needs and ideas uh, from across the region. In Westmoreland County, uh, we included two projects, one called Greensburg Main Streets. So the Greensburg Central Business District was identified as a pedestrian crash priority location and um, where pedestrian crashes were overrepresented in the city. And so the suggested scope of this grant includes Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh Street and, and Main Street and includes planning, design, and engineering for streetscape improvements along these corridors, including traffic calming, bus shelters, and bus stop ball bots. Um, so, uh, and also possibly transit signal priority and, and, and crosswalks. So uh, we also put in for a safety study for Harrison Avenue, State Route 130, in, uh, in Jeanette. Um, so the total request within an application for Westmoreland projects was I think a little over a million dollars. Um, the other thing I wanna mention was the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, NTIA, Enabling Middle Mile Broadband Grant Program. This is all about uh, getting better broadband access to folks that don't have it. Uh, so in partnership with DQE Communications, we put in an application that involved construction of nearly 170 new miles of fiber within 
proximity of almost 16,000 homes and 117 community organizations to reach over uh, 37,000 folks. Uh, we're expected to hear on that in March. There are two routes located within Westmoreland County that are part of that application. We received a lot of support from county staff on this endeavor and we appreciate that support. Um, uh, and in the chat box, I will uh, include a link uh, that will get into more details on our uh, middle mile efforts, our broadband efforts. Next slide. Uh, this this slide, you know, talks about the need for high speed internet co connectivity is greater now than ever before. You know, with the, you know, the emergence of COVID, the COVID virus really has forced the world to rethink the way critical services such as education and healthcare are delivered. So it's become more critical than ever, than ever to have good broadband access, and uh, you know. And the, you know, so it's not only affected education and healthcare, but uh, we also hear uh, about COVID's impacts. You heard uh, Tom and Dave talk about how transit transit folks are starting to rethink. You know, the last long range plan was done in the last uh, long range plan was done in 2019, and the word COVID doesn't appear in the document because it didn't it wasn't part of our language. Uh, so. Um, Getting back to broadband, you know, during the development of our, our long range plan, the provision of broadband to underserved and unserved emerges one of the region's leading needs last time around. So it's it's definitely a focus of ours now. Um, high speed connectivity should be viewed as an essential form of transportation in the in the 21st century. So this this plan uh, uh, examines the current true state of the region's broadband connectivity in relation to the region's demographic and socioeconomic composition to ensure its recommendations help to equitably serve the region's most vulnerable populations. And I'll, I'll put a link to that plan in the chat. And I also wanna remind folks as, as we wrap this up here, to if you have jotted any notes or you have any questions, please use the chat box and we will, we will get to that uh, question at the end of our presentation. Right now, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Meredith, who's going to chat about uh, economic development activities. Steve? Dom, uh, very much appreciated. We can go ahead to the next slide. Um, as Dom mentioned, I'm, the, I'm Steve Meredith. I'm the manager of commercial lending. I am standing in for Jennifer Lasser, our uh, uh, director of workforce and economic development. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we do on the economic development side of the house. Um, so. As you know, SPC wears a lot of different hats. We are a metropolitan planning organization, but we're also a local development district and an economic development district. We're essentially responsible for all transportation and economic development funding uh, that is allocated to the region. Um, we have a nine county region, uh, which uh, services all of the counties that are MPO services, except for Lawrence. And I don't know why we don't serve Lawrence, but Lawrence is from an economic development perspective, but Lawrence is considered part of the Northwest Commission's territory. It's one of those things where I don't make the rules, I just have to follow them. Um, in, in any event, <clears throat> we, we strive to plan new transportation solutions, uh, build a competitive economy, that's a, that's a buzzword uh, these days, uh, manage environmental resources, all to bring together and, and build a work, world class infrastructure uh, filled with livable communities. Um, we are also responsible for the region's SEDS, the uh, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Uh, and alignment with our SEDS is usually required by most grants with any economic or workforce development uh, focus. Uh, so, from a workforce and economic development uh, perspective, we provide services to our small business, uh, both profit and nonprofit and government organizations to enhance the region's competitiveness across southwestern Pennsylvania. Next slide, please. So some of those services, like I said, we uh, we, we are responsible for the SEDS. 
Um, we're a regional li uh, liaison to several state and federal agencies, such as the Appalachian Regional Commission, the Economic Development Administration, and uh, the Department of Community and Economic Development uh, for the Commonwealth. Um, we have uh, small business support services. I run the uh, what we used to call the business finance program. We now call it the commercial lending program. Uh, we provide uh, small business loans at a favorable interest rate that uh, is essentially like a public-private partnership, every loan that we do. We have some equity from the borrower, and then we split whatever uh, is left after that equity injection between ourselves and then a private bank uh, brings in another portion of the funding. Uh, we also have a procurement and government assistance program uh, focused on helping small businesses go after federal, state, and local government contracts. And then we have an export assistance program program as well. Um, we also assist with stakeholder engagement and convening, uh, workforce planning, economic analysis, things of that such nature, and then grant administration and technical assistance. Um, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, in addition to those hats, in addition to the MPO hat, in addition to the, uh, the, the LDD and the EDD hat, we are also a core funded partner and fiscal agent for Southwestern Pennsylvania's uh, PREP or Partnership for Regional Economic Performance program. Uh, and this is just some uh, region wide statistics from some of our PREP partners. Uh, you know, things like training workshops and attendees over 170. Um, the big thing that we want to uh, take out of this is jobs created or retained. 560 over 560 jobs created over 2100 plus retained whenever i talk to people about economic development and and people ask me what is economic development um i i really boil it down to a very simple math equation i say economic development equals jobs because the best way to develop an economy is to get people working uh, either get them working through job creation or keep them working through job retention and we do that through our clients counseling hours, our business counseling sessions, the loans we've closed, the government procurement uh, hours uh, of assistance, the export hours of assistance, things of that such nature. Uh, next slide, please. So economic development grant support. This is another big uh, aspect of our economic development team. The technical assistance that we provide, we provide a technical assistance for EDA grants for Appalachian Regional Commission grants. Uh, one of the big grant programs that we provide technical assistance for is our ARC area development grants. Uh, this is a grant that uh, Westmoreland County has had success with in the past. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, but Penn State New Kensington got some ARC money for their entrepreneurial center. Um, there is currently one ARC project that has been invited to apply, uh, and that is for Local Union 354. I believe that's a plumbers and pipe fitters union in Westmoreland County. They have a project for workforce training. Um, so area development is, is, is a huge thing. EDA grants are also a, a huge grant that we also help out with. Um, recently, we've also been uh, helping out with NSF grants, some other things like that. Um, before we so I sort of conclude my portion of the uh, of this presentation, I did want to make one mention. Uh, so the Pennsylvania Economic Development uh, Association, uh, basically the our, our professional association for economic development professionals in uh, in Pennsylvania, they have a fall conference every year uh, and uh, the RFP for the uh, location of the 2024 fall conference just closed. But uh, the reason why I wanna plug this is uh, you should be on the lookout for uh, the 2025 RFP, 2026 and beyond. Um, the PETA conference, Pennsylvania Economic Development Association, Association Conference is a really good opportunity for Westmoreland County to show off their assets. Um, and if you need help connecting with uh, the staff at PETA to, to go about how, uh, to, to find out how you go about submitting a proposal to bring the PETA conference, the fall conference in 2025 or beyond um, to, to bring that to Westmoreland County, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my uh, contact information in the chat box there. I think that's it for me. I think the next slide is going to say something akin to questions. <laughs> so next slide. There we go. All right, good. I've got it. I've got it uh, there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it back to Dom to uh, finish us out. Thank you, Dom. All right. Um, thank you, Steve. 
Um, just let's check the uh, chat box, Shannon or Rhonda. I don't know if you want to. I've tried to make some responses to some of these. I think I actually think Rachel made a re very good response to one question. But uh, you want to, Shannon or Rhonda, you want to kind of cut through it? Uh, I can go ahead and read them. We have a, uh, a question from John Chirac. Is there a good definition for what data driven means in layman's terms? I, I like Rachel's answer. Uh, right, I'm sorry, Dom. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> and Rachel's answer was decision making based on data analysis and interpretation. I, I apologize. I went to the first one. Uh, I would say staff recommendations and and uh, and decision making by by our board or by you know governing bodies based on data analysis and interpretation. I think that was a good answer. Well, I don't know, Ryan, if you have anything you want to add to that. Or anybody on our staff? Right on target, yeah. Okay, and then we have a question from MTS Hussein um, that Dom answered, but let me go ahead and read it for the group. Do you find, do you do green finance to fund projects such as green bonds? And Dom, uh, you put an answer in the chat directing to our webpage on funding programs, but is there anything else that you wanted to say? Yeah, I don't know that we do green bonds. I don't think, Ryan, I'm sorry. I'll jump in here. I know for a fact that from a finance, from a business finance perspective, we don't do any sort of green bonds, but the state actually has a small business loan program for businesses that are trying to improve their uh, energy efficiency. That's the, that's the only real green finance that we partake in. Um, so if, if, uh, MTS wants to connect with me offline, I'll throw my contact information, uh, up into the chat in case they have follow up questions. That'd be great, Steve. Thank you. And I believe that's everything that we have in the chat. Oh, wait, hold on 1 moment. Um, from Scott Harshman, were there slash, are there any highway projects related to route 22? or I-376 Parkway East Corridor between Westmoreland County and Pittsburgh? Well, um, go ahead, Ryan. Say those are, are some of our main corridors um, between the two counties. We have uh, numerous projects um, on the interstate program on the parkway, including uh, this is off the top of my head, but um, there is the Squirrel Hill interchange. There is the commercial. There is <clears throat> the safety and access improvements on the parkway. So there's a lot going on on the parkway east. Um, Route 22, I don't have that off the top of my head, but it is it, within District 12, you know, one of the key corridors. And it's on the national <clears throat> highway system. So we will have, um, I'm sure of it, some either long term preservation or, or some uh, reconstruction efforts. Um, mm -hmm. 22 um, with, with our NHS funding. Um, right. So I'll turn it over to back yeah. to our district 12. I, I just want to add, I want to add that um, a few years. A few years ago, PennDOT completed the Eastern Corridor uh, study, which included I-376. And there were many, many, um, you know, recommended improvements. And, uh, and, uh, and some of those are, are will, will likely flow into our long range plan. I know that PennDOT is looking at, you know, with the Parkway East and sort of the the limitations that it, in terms of uh, available right away. Um, it, PennDOT's looking uh, right now at the interchanges, the interchanges, the designs of, of those interchanges um, can be improved, you know, the, the merging and, and uh, getting on and off at those interchanges can be can be improved 
by improving the interchanges themselves, you know, longer merge lengths and so forth. So uh, that's one of the things they're taking a look at right now. Um, Just to um, go a little bit, I wrote it in the chat, but we don't have any upcoming, like, in the next four years projects on state route 22 we just had that preservation up you know up there um this past year that finished up we do have one on state route 30 that's uh upcoming and that's right at the border with district 11. so um that's and like you said dom we do have them um on the interstate i saw them in your presentation we have um the interstate 70 over 3009, which we call the rocker bearing bridges. We have Arnold City coming up. 5170 is under construction right now. And then we have the Bentleyville to Bell Vernon interchange. So, and then we always have our, you know, maintenance projects on the interstate. Yeah. I know PennDOT District 11 has a, a major project, uh, the Commercial Street Bridge, which is, you know, um, fairly significant project that will be done over a number of years. That's the large bridge right before the Squirrel Hill Tunnel. And uh, and as I said in my presentation, we, we made an application to one of the discretionary programs to uh, incorporate more technology on I-376, mostly to handle help us handle uh, incidents that occur so that people know ahead of time when incidents incidents are occurring, you know, incidents are one of the leading causes of non-recurring congestion on I-376. So, uh, you know, telling people ahead of time that there's an incident, you know, you may want to find another way or you may want to get off and take transit because transit may be quicker uh, with the East Busway being right there and so forth. So um, I hope we've answered your question. Okay, we have a question from John Chirac related to the Route 22 corridor. Any chance that there could be park and rides near commercial districts and express bus service in the future? Rachel, uh, Judah did give a response uh, which says no upcoming projects on SR 22 in District 12. We do have one on SR 30 at the 11 at the District 11 border. Rachel, did you want to add anything to that? I was responding to the previous. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, uh, second question from John. On Route 66 in Delmont, there is a media discussion of a sidewalk along Route 66. How will that be funded? And what about the crossing for the Westmoreland Heritage Trail? Um, I could take a little part of that, which is, um, Route the Delmont sidewalks, we um, <clears throat> SPCs provided funding from our SMART program for a portion of the sidewalks in that area. Um, so that's at least um, a project we have uh, in, in that area. And Ryan, that project, the sidewalks, they're going to be, we had an existing pinned up project on 66. So we were able to add in that funding to that project. So we're not just doing the sidewalks, the roadway will be done too. So the, that's gonna be funded from the tip. And um, as for the crossing for the Westmoreland Heritage Trail, John, I believe Josh in my office just attended a meeting on that. And I'm pretty sure as part of federal fiscal year 22, through the T-HUD appropriations, the Westmoreland Heritage Trail was awarded a million dollars for the pre-construction phases of this portion of the project. We have not been yet given any word on how the funding will flow through the TIP yet, but they were funded for, the, um, for that portion of the trail for pre-construction. Thanks. I I am. Uh, thanks for that answer. That answer, Angela. I just wanted you to be aware. I'm sure you probably already are, but just want to reinforce. We're begin. I'm on a planning team to begin an active transportation plan 
for the borough of Delmont in an attempt to uh, connect to that heritage trail at and some Josh point. Josh is also on. Josh Thiexton from my office is on that as yeah, well. Yeah, he'll be on the stakeholder committee for that. I just wanted to make sure that you know we planned jointly with that planning process for the sidewalks and for connection to that trail as we move forward. That's a good comment. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I think um, the question regarding transit service in the future on the 22 corridor, I don't know if Tom wants to chime in on that, but I, I don't have any anything to say in response in, in answering that one. There's no active uh, projects uh, from Westmoreland County uh, on that corridor right now, but in terms of service, you know, what I can tell you is that um, when we, when we met with Westmoreland County transit, 1 of the things that the general manager said to us was uh, for the upcoming study. Uh, that he wants to do, um, he used the phrase, everything is on the table. And I think uh, as we talked about what that means, I think the idea of the types of services to be provided and where those services are to be provided in the county uh, are most likely gonna change over time. And, and um, I believe, you know, my sense with all the transit operators is that um, a focus on local service, a focus on, um, you know, getting people uh, to places within the county, uh, commercial, commercial in the county, um, is, is looms very large, and the traditional um, um, services that are focused on commuter services outside of the county, you know, from uh, in the case of Westmoreland, to, you know, from uh, Greensburg, the transit center in Greensburg and other park and ride lots into downtown. Um, the ridership's not there anymore and, you know, it's hard to tell whether it will be there in the future or not. So all I can say is that, you know, the route 22 corridor, as you mentioned, has uh, a lot of commercial, um, activity there. Um, there's, uh, it is certainly talked about that quarter is certainly talked about in smart moves connections. So, um, you know, we shall see, but there are no, uh, active uh, projects that I'm aware of for park and ride projects along that quarter right now. So, again, in connection with the active transportation planning process, it's just beginning and that should be wrapped up by. September of next year and approved by the borough of Delmont. The transit piece is something that we're charged to address. There are large commercial vacant properties along that Route 66 corridor. I'd like to just put on the table that if you're thinking about park and rides along the corridor, should we address that in the plan at all? Um, and, and then I also saw the multimodal hubs in Greensburg, New Kensington, Apollo, Vandergrift, and I, there were a few other places. I'm wondering if Delmont could be included there. Uh, Related to that, what I'm just talking about. So, just a comment for you. Appreciate the comment. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think definitely that that should be part of your planning. You should talk to the, absolutely talk to the transit uh, operator in that case, and vice versa. You know, I think that as um, as the Westmoreland County Transit Authority uh, takes a look at its entire service area. Uh, knowing what's going on at the, in the local communities is going to be so, so important. All right. Um, are there any more? I don't see any more questions in the chat. Uh, no, I don't see any more, Dom. Okay. I uh, want to give uh, uh, Dan Carpenter is here from Westmoreland County. Dan, I uh, just wanted to say hi and give you an opportunity to to uh, if, you, if you wanted to address anything or comment on anything. No, not really. Um, I do just want to you know, say thank you to SBC staff to pin dot staff and, and those from the public and our uh, public participation panel that are attending tonight. 
um, you know, definitely appreciate uh, your attention to uh, West Wallen's needs and uh, future projects. So just want to thank everybody for, for some time this evening. And again, like Rhonda mentioned, um, you know, in terms of providing input or having questions, you know, either reach out directly to SBC or you can contact me um, and I can funnel those questions or, or try to answer some myself. So no, again, just thank everybody for their time this evening. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you for those comments. Good, those nice comments, Dan. Um, uh, we'll be back. You know, our schedule says that uh, once we draft uh, an update to the long range plan, uh, I guess we'll be back probably in the April, May, early June timeframe and during the 30 day comment period on the draft. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to see everybody here uh, to get more feedback and more comments before we um, ask for a final adoption from our, our commissioners. So with that, um, just want to thank everybody again for being here and participating uh, this afternoon, this evening. <laughs> um, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs>